I'd never heard of a fire tornado until a late summer newscast explained how large dust devils mix with brush fires to create a column of flame. And I thought of the Israelites leaving Egypt. My wife looked up, said, that would make a good poem. This week, same story. Not the newscast, but once again, a family member or friend suggests a casual remark on some fragment of living would make a good poem. Surprising new fact or everyday irony? That too, they say. Most of them are normal people, largely immune to poetry, except as a courtesy to me. But I still admire their reaching to connect with what words do, how they keep me out of mischief, those flaming emails and irate letters to the editor. It's not that I want to ignore or dismiss the good intentions of those who identify my vocation with the small things in life, moving through our brief time together like a field scout for the muse, scouring the blue highways of America for a promising quarterback to move this art down the field. So much depends, after all, on our noticing what Neruda saw, what Williams made remarkable in remarking on it. Lemons and forks and salt shakers, the nail in a woman's shoe, brown paper almost human in its tumbling down the street. I suppose I should be grateful and appreciate how brief nods of others acknowledge and encourage this work. In that awareness, blessing themselves more than me or anything as weightless as a poem. How strings of words dare to reveal a mosaic's hosts of fragments, bright shards that spark a return to the everyday and find reassurance in how small pieces support the great weight of the world. That too, a poem.